Hey, everybody, and welcome to Node.js Foundation Enterprise Conversations. Uh, I'm Michael Rogers uh, here with Tracy Hines from the Node.js Foundation. Why don't you say hi? Howdy. And we're here with Paul Milcom uh, from WildWorks. Say hi, Paul. Howdy. All right. Well, let's just let's just jump like right, right, right into it. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, Paul? <laughs> uh, let's. Uh, so, tell me a little bit about your role and your team over there at WildWorks. Yeah. So, um, at Wild, have you ever heard of a uh, uh, Pokemon Go? <laughs> I I have been in a cave for six months, so I have not heard about it. <laughs> oh, that would be a good joke. But okay, never mind. Um, so. <laughs> So we work on an online virtual world called Animal Jam. And uh, I, I mean, it takes a lot of different teams to make everything happen. Uh, but my team is basically concerned with keeping the kids safe that play in the game. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I provide technical direction for the team and I uh, do, do a lot of the coding as well. Um, but that's our main focus is making sure that the kids can come online, learn, socialize, and be safe. Oh, cool. Cool. How, how do you do that? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of vague. Um, <laughs> so uh, it, it's an online world, and um, certain things are undesirable, obviously. Any sort of, like, you know, uh, bullying or, um, you know, racism, anything like that, we want to make sure that is, is not in our game. Uh, and, you know, the kids can get on and they can chat and they can, you know, say uh, anything, pretty much. And so we just want to make sure it's a good environment for everyone to come and, and be safe and learn. Um, and so the way we keep it that way is we have a team of a lot of moderators. So it takes a lot of human moderation, probably about 100 people we have watching the virtual world. Um, and so I, we create tools for them so that they can key in on conversations that might be troublesome or any behavior that might be undesirable. And so, um, you know, we have automated chat filters and things like that. but uh, English is, well, any any language is really hard to automatically figure out the context of what they're talking about and what it, if it might or might not be appropriate. And so, uh, you know, we, we do keyword searches and things like that. And um, so I, me and my team are at the front end and the back ends for these things, uh, these tools that the moderators use so they can make sure that uh, the world is safe. And so how are you using Node.js to help you accomplish that? Yeah, so... Um, we use Node.js for pretty much the back end of uh, all of the tools. Most of it is built on top of Express. Um, but it's, it's just a really nice environment for us to use. I mean, everybody knows JavaScript, and, and you can jump right in. You can start building stuff. There's a huge community. Uh, you know, I think we'll get more into the specifics of why we're using Node.js exactly. But um, uh, yeah, we use it for all of the back end servers. Mm -hmm. So all of the back end, some of the front end. Mm -hmm. cool. cool. Was all, was that information always, or was that always in Node? No. Um, so Animal Jam's been online for quite a while now. I mean, for a game, it's really old. It's seven or eight years old now, I think. Um, and originally, all the the back end for the tools was written in PHP, and we've migrated to Node.js. Cool. So, so tell us what that was like. Why did you end up going with Node.js, and, and what did the transition look like? Yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot of reasons that Node.js is really good. A lot of times people bring up their performance, and that's certainly a good thing. And we use Node.js elsewhere in the, the game stack. Um, but for specifically for these tools, it's not super important that it be performant. Um, but uh, Node.js is asynchronous by default, which was a huge advantage over PHP. Um, you know, we had some things that were, they, they took a long time because, you, you know, you had to serially process all, all of these things. And using Node allows us to parallelize them and speed them up that way. Um, uh, initially, I mean, we gradually mi migrated to Node, and it was a lot of work. Um, initially, it was just because uh, Amazon's uh, drivers were way better for Node.js, and they're just easier to use than the ones we had for PHP. And that was the initial got us looking into it. Um, uh, but yeah, um, we're almost fully, I think we're fully migrated over now. There might be like a couple of PHP scripts we have left. Uh, but it's, it's working a lot better. It's a lot more productive this way. Cool, cool. That's great, that's great. 
it's always good to hear when people move to node and have nothing but positive experiences <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so uh, oh go ahead go ahead I was, I was just gonna say we, we really enjoy it, especially the uh i mean javascript uh you know that's like a controversial language right but um you know, we, we really like it, and I, I personally really like the language, and I think it brings a lot to the table. And especially, like, uh, NPM and the whole package ecosystem is incredible. You know, if, if you need to do something, there's a really good chance someone's already written it, and you can tap into it. And, uh, like, Node's paradigm is really simple as well, which I really appreciate. You, you know, you have a package JSON, it'll reproduce, you know, you can just build these reliable builds, get everyone going. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like about it. Yeah. So, so as you've um, you know moved to this this platform that has this huge ecosystem where you don't have to build as much, where you have async by default, um, how has that actually impacted the the business case uh, inside of the company for Node and all of that? Yeah. So um, this moderation team, uh, it's kind of expensive to keep up, right? And so any time that they're waiting on results or um, it, you know they they just can't get their work done as quickly, that impacts the team. I mean, one, like you're just, people are just sitting there not doing anything, which is a waste. But also if like you're waiting on server side calls, then I think people get distracted and they're like, oh, I'll check out Facebook for a couple minutes and then you know, come back and see if this is processed or whatever. Um, so the responsiveness of all of our tools has really increased, which is, which is awesome. Um, also, we found Node.js to be a lot easier to debug, which has saved a lot of programming time as well. Um, it, yeah, so the impact has really been efficiency as far as like humans. I, I think the people are a lot more efficient that, that use the tools and the programmers. That's really great. So like you're saying it's more efficient for, for the as a tool and, and also for people. Mm -hmm. um, have the teams inside of the company cha changed or adjusted around that at all? Um, well, I mean, everyone's adopted the workflow, uh, <laughs> which is which is nice. Um, what do you mean exactly? Well, I mean, so traditionally, like, especially if you have PHP, right? Like you've got mm -hmm. some people that are really, probably very good with PHP, really know how to scale it out. Um, and then you have the front end people and they're they're quite disconnected from that team usually. Um, mm -hmm. Partially because, you know, it's just different skill sets, but also it's just a different language. Um, and have, has, you know, has any of the communication between them gotten any better? Or are you seeing more kind of agency and people kind of floating back and forth a little bit more? Or have things pretty much stayed the same? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, in our specific case for the moderation, um, it's always been the same developers that write the front end and the back end. It's always been full stack, um, but it's changed because it used to be we had a Flash client front end, and that was written in Flex MXML, and then the back end was PHP. But since we've changed it, both the front, the client, and the server are written in JavaScript, which is really nice. Um, I mean, there's not as much context switching, which is cool, and um, yeah, I, I would say overall, it's just it's easier for people to get up to speed on the project and to, to start contributing and working. And the, the tool set is really nice for JavaScript as well, um, especially when we were looking at using Flash for the front end. I mean, that's a technology that's on the way, well, has been on the way out for <laughs> quite a while now. Um, and so it's, it's really nice that uh, you don't have to use these tools that aren't really supported anymore. You know, we can use the latest and, and greatest stuff. That's really cool. Uh, is that what are you going to be talking about at uh, Node Interactive? Is it some of the the latest and greatest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, so my talk specifically is going to be out about data validation. Um, and so when I started working at WildWorks, Animal Jam was a really small <laughs> project. You know, we we'd see like a few hundred people online every day and got excited or something. But I mean, it's it's really grown. We have millions of active users now, and so. The scaling of the system has been a, was a big focus for years. You know, like how can we get these players online and make sure the game's not crashing and make sure you know it's moderated, everything's supported. Um, you know, it's just our data volumes grew. Everything was growing, um, and that, that's still the case. The game's still growing, but as we've grown, we've become a lot bigger target for attackers, which sounds insane to me. I don't know why people are wasting their time trying to <laughs> hack a kid's game, but uh, it happens. And so there's been a big focus on security. And so um, one of the, 
uh, security is just one aspect of it, but but watching your data as it comes into your API and making sure it's the correct data is a huge boon for security. There's a lot of different things that you can do, a lot of different layers you can protect. Like um, the most obvious thing is like SQL. You have a SQL database, you gotta watch out for injection, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. Um, but one additional layer you can do is just make sure that the data coming into your application is exactly what you're expecting. And so, um, yeah, maybe I don't want to give away all the surprises of the talk, I guess, but <laughs> um, it's a, you, you just want to make sure, like, it's not, like, you're not just expecting strings or, you know, you have some flimsy contract like that. You want to make sure that the data you're bringing in is exactly what you want. You can map that directly onto models in your application and, and then use it. That way you know it's safe and it's reliable. So... Right. No, that's really good. I hadn't thought about security in that way before, but just like getting more introspection and looking through the data actually allows you to build better security layers. That makes a lot of sense now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And I think it's something that's skimmed over a lot. It's just like, okay, these are the parameters we're expecting, run parse int on this thing. And I guess that's okay, but um, you know, you can end up with like type errors and conversion errors. The other thing that we do is it, not just data coming into the API, but we look at data leaving the API as well. Um, and that's just another layer of security, right? Because if you're returning data that you're not expecting to return, uh, that's an issue. I mean, either you've got malformed data in your database or someone has found out like they've done an injection attack or something and they're dumping sensitive data. And so if you watch it on the way out as well and validate on the way out, you can prevent those things. Oh, wow. So, I mean, and like in our specific case, it, it's it's okay if like we spend extra CPU cycles making making sure we have this security right. Um, that might be an issue if you were to like processing tons and tons of requests at the same time. But I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's really worth looking into because uh, security it, it's a it's much easier to pay for security up front than it is after you've had a breach. You know, so that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not, there's never enough talks about security in Node. So this is going to be like, even just as a part of this case, it's going to be a really, really interesting talk. I think to see. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, I look forward to it. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. yeah I look yeah. forward to seeing you. It was a great talk. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. Just, just look for the hat that you see in the avatar. You'll, you'll find me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, avatar plus beard. I'll check yeah, it out. Exactly. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, hey, Paul. Thank you.